Can you hear me, David? I can hear you. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay. Can you, can you see me? I can see you, yes. I can see you. All right, hang on a second. Let me switch over to the main camera here. Oh, there we go. Okay, we're going, going. I think people can hear you, right? People can, everybody in the chat can hear David? Yeah. Okay, there you go. I think they can hear you. I'm not too sure about this. <laughs> Let's see what they say. Yeah, they say they can hear you. Uh, they say you're low. Let me try something else really quick. Let me try doing it a different way. Try it now. Talk. I'm talking. Oh, yeah, there you go. That's actually better. That's better. Okay. We all right, cool. So we've got obvious. Hey, welcome to the Tuesday show. Obviously, uh, we've got David on Skype here today. You know, well, you know, some people can't tell if it's David or Sajam, but it is David. But here we go. I'm great. Gonna, I'm gonna do this right here. There we go. I'm gonna zoom in my camera because I guess I can do you that. You can zoom in the camera. I mean, I mean, can you see the stream right now on your on your screen over there? Uh, yeah, I'm looking at it, but okay, I don't see okay. me on it yet. Well, I mean, if you, uh, it depends, right? Like, there's there's different ways to do, I mean, I have this. I could also put the official screen capture on there, but, uh. Whoa. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, you can, that's actually hilarious, but, uh, sure. Or I can either also, way, I guess. either that or I can do this, and, like, whenever you talk, like, start talking. Start talking, David. Oh, okay, I'm talking. Words. Words and stuff. Hey, okay. hey, hey. And like, stuff. Like, say a sentence. Okay, I'm saying a sentence, and words are coming out of my mouth. <laughs> Alright, let me, let, me, let me try to add the real thing here. Let me add the real thing. Hey, there we go. Okay, okay. We actually have the real thing here. here we yeah, go. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay, let's do this here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just seeing now what you did. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, That's hilarious. Okay, okay, okay. Here we go. Oops, wrong thing here. There you go. Now it's almost as if we are, you are in the room with me. There you go. Okay, see? Look at this. See? Oh, yeah, that actually looks okay. Yeah, you can barely even tell that you're not here, right? So there you go. Okay. That looks basically how I look. Yeah, there you More go. More or less. Okay. <clears throat> Brighten this up a little bit, but yeah, all right. Anyway, so, <laughs> you want to just be like, hey, welcome to the Tuesday show? Yeah, let's do that. Hey, hey welcome, 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 yeah. welcome to the Tuesday show. <laughs> this is Ultra Chen TV, and I'm Ultra David. And I'm James Chen. How's everybody going? How's it going, David? Ah, <laughs> oh, it's going great. You know, it's it was took me a long time to drive over to your place today, but I'm glad that I finally was able to. Mm -hmm. uh, I had work that took my attention until, like, whoa, I'm listening to myself. <laughs> Why? Oh, because it's on the thing. Anyway, so what are we going to talk about today? Let's talk about uh, some things that happened recently. We're going to talk about, see if this works. Uh, talk. Well, hang on a second. Do that again. Do that again. Do it again. Do it again. Hey. Do it again. There you go. We're going to talk about go. Texas Showdown. We're going to talk about Ely again more. And uh -huh. we'll talk about Ed. Uh, and the other characters that were talked about on the NRS stream, including Darkseid and some others. And we'll talk about <laughs> Tekken banning and so forth. Okay, there you go. That kind of hey, that, that, hey, look at that. All right. I, I just, I missed the, I missed the other arm, so that's my bad right there. So Not exactly a uh, high quality <laughs> video over there, but what, what, what are you going to do? Oh man. Okay. Okay. Cool. Well, uh, let's see here. Yeah. So let's talk about Texas Showdown first. Uh, obviously, we were just there this weekend. It was a ranking event here in the United States. Uh, didn't get quite the international presence, although uh, Jawa Jawa showed up for that. Uh, but outside of that, it was a pretty cool event. I mean, what, what's your what was your opinion of the event overall? That was great. Yeah, it was. It's definitely the the farthest that Texas Showdown has come in, in regaining what it used to be, which is as we said, oftentimes you know it used to be one of the one of the big premieres in, in the states before there was right. premieres as a classification. It was just one of the major majors. Right. Uh, and then for many years it fell off, but we've been coming back for I would say this is the 
fourth out of five years, if I recall correctly, maybe five out of six. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And each year it's, it's noticeably bigger and better. Um, and, uh, and this was the fanciest. I mean, it was in a fancy hotel. It was in this fancy part of Houston. Uh, lots of players were there. A bunch of different games represented well. Uh, I don't know, man. What did you think? Uh, I thought it was fantastic, actually. From what I could tell, a lot of, like it was one of those events that everybody that went to seemed to really enjoy it. Like I talked to a lot of different people there, and they all seemed to have a really good time at the event, and that's always a really good sign, right? Like, you yep. know how most events there's always like some random drama or something crazy going on or something like that, but I felt like uh, this one. It, went, it was run really smoothly. Sure, I mean, things went a little late on Sunday, whatever, but that happens all the time. But overall, I yeah. thought everybody had a really good time at the event. So, yeah. and, and even when it went late, it was like not because the organizers screwed up. It was like a couple of the games just went long. You know? Right, right, exactly. And, and that happens, as you know. Uh, that, that, does, that does occur. Definitely, definitely. Uh, so, yeah, it was, it was all good, and I was really happy for people running it and for the people there that that they have a uh they have a, a big event like that now hopefully it'll continue to grow I'm, I, I'm sure it will considering it's been doing that right exactly so i mean and and uh the city it was in was really nice i know that they're trying to like really really pushing hard to push it back to the original status that it used to be um, yeah. but like the, the area was super nice like it was just in this great part of houston there's lots to do Lots yeah. of places to walk around if you weren't playing. You know, it wasn't like in the middle of nowhere. So, you yeah. know, I don't, yeah, I just thought it was really, really well done. Yeah, it, it's true. Some people are mentioning it that uh, MKX had, during its top eight, uh, they started the matches on an unpatched console. But that was, <laughs> okay, okay. That was caught pretty quickly. And they just redid the matches. Only a couple matches had had taken place and the players were okay with it and it was okay. like really no big deal okay cool so, cool uh, so but no yeah one... that was the only snafu that I, I even heard of the whole weekend and that's pretty minor as, uh, as events go yeah but they had smash they had side super turbo tournaments etc etc uh but yeah. do you want to let me let me pull up the results here that's what i'm trying to do right now that's why i'm leaning off to the side so uh Cut. Trying to get the results here here we go Text no actually the results did not change the results did not change. They were the same for MKX. People, same people won. Oh, right. As, okay, okay. You know, so it was really like no big deal. It turned out, it was, which was good. Yeah. Also, I mean, shout outs to the Level Up team for you know, you know, good job running the event too. Good stream production too. They do one thing on the stream that I love, by the way, and it's actually very similar to what's going on over here. But you notice that when they actually put the players on the screen, they put them on the correct side. Like that matches yeah. when you actually see them like in game, right? It's weird because the person on the right is actually on the left, you know, but they angle the cameras in such a way that like this, so it doesn't look like that, you know what I mean? And then the, the, the boxes that they do, they have like these diagonal cuts. And so it just works really well. I, I really love how they do that. And you've seen them experiment with that a lot in uh, Wednesday Night Fight. So I just thought that that was really cool, so. Yeah, they got tweets up there. People were talking. Yeah, it was it, it was a very nicely run production. And and you know, Panda X Gaming was there as well. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, the other stream. They were they were the secondary stream. Um, but uh, everything went ran great on that one as well. Yeah, even Javi afterwards at the end, you know, I was talking to him, telling him, <laughs> hey, "Bless you." Ah, oh, you sneezed all over me, dude. Oh, God. Sorry, man. It's but, uh, just... <laughs> but even Javi said afterwards that. Uh, he probably couldn't have run the event without Panda X Gaming's help because, you know, Jonathan, of course, you know, does all the work for all the events in that area. And he's pretty much a tournament running veteran now, so. He's a good guy. Anyway, let's talk about the results a little bit. <laughs> okay. Uh, do you have them up or do you want me to go over them? I do, but you can talk about them if you'd like. Okay. Uh, so for Street Fighter, as we mentioned, it was a r ranking event. So a lot of people showed up uh, for this uh, from around the country. And um, do you want me to do top 16 or should I just do the top eight? Uh, yeah, I mean, well, do, do top eight, but you know, I guess we should note that... Uh, no, you might as well do top 16, man. Go for it. Okay, Go all right. So tied in 13th place was Magneto 1080p, strong Texas player from that, from that area. Uh, also GOL Nova Spec 
who did really well yeah. with Fong, and he's from Louisiana, Gods of Louisiana, that's what GOL stands for. Aziz Sensei, a strong Nikali player from the area as well, and K-Brad, Eiji's K-Brad got 13th place. Uh, ninth place was Flash, and uh, mm-hmm. Chris Tatarian, Justin Wong, and mm-hmm. uh, as we mentioned, the only uh, traveling person, uh, Dark Joa from uh, internationally. Uh, seventh place was Ludovic from Maryland, right? Or Virginia? Yep, from Maryland. Maryland, okay. And uh, Cali Power, <laughs> Mr. Alex Vai himself, uh, you know, being the guy running the stream and he gets to travel there for free and like enter and place and everything. So, uh, fifth place was Noble Vagabond, strong uh, Nakali player, originally from Texas, now living in Colorado. And Rise Marn. Thinking man's Marn, as you described him uh, this weekend. Uh, yeah. Fourth place was F3 Alucard. Second, uh, third place was EG's NY Chris G. Second place, CYG BST Snake Eyes. Getting all the way to second place. And first place was Defend the North Pies Smug. Finally taking a ranking event. Finally in an offline tournament getting Balrog to top eight. And, yeah. Uh, not only that, but winning the tournament itself. Yeah, yeah. Um, very impressive by Smug, man. His his Balrog is. I mean, I don't know if it's the best. It's probably between him and and PR Balrog, I guess. Yeah. But uh, it's just, they play quite differently, and and his is so patient. Mm-hmm. And to have a character that's that explosive and that oppressive, but that you play as a control patience character and then you blow the opponent up whenever you Whoa, get a chance or whenever you need to that's a such a such a solid song she's, she's giving you add on my this page day. is playing stop stop give her a teleflora boot okay okay uh, that's amazing st- 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 okay sorry continue continue forward there was an ad playing on my web page so oh yeah i saw it that's right <sighs> okay uh yeah, so that was that was cool. And Smug is super strong. He was strong with Dudley, a character that nobody else was strong with. Like nobody was even in. In fact, he was the top five Dudleys, right? right. The top ten Dudleys or something like that on Xbox Live mm-hmm. back in Street Fighter Four. Yeah, he had uh, like nine accounts. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Uh, and and it, it's like basically the same for for Boxer now, with the exception of PR Balrog and maybe just a couple of other people. Right. So, uh, man, he is he is so so good. And Snake Eyes really cool. Last few tournaments he's gotten top eight dream hack and then this one and second place after having not gotten second place last time uh is awesome because he didn't have a lot of success for a while Mm -hmm. early season one and then basically nothing uh i mean he didn't do nothing he was i think he was top 16 at evo or something like like he did he continued to do well it's just he didn't like make the big splash right everyone everyone was calling him washed up and everything like that so yeah, so I thought that was really, really nice. Um, Chris G might have gotten farther, but he just, he clearly was mentally out of it when it came to the losers' finals. Yeah. Uh, uh, after having lost winners' finals uh, very closely and, and uh, just didn't go how he wanted to, you really see that when he played against Snake Eyes after that. Right, right. I talked to him actually after the tournament, and I was just, just like, your mind wasn't there at all, was it? And he was like, no. He even said that one time he tried to flash kick, like wake up EX flash kick or something, and he hit punches instead of kick. He just said oh, like his brain was up. just still thinking about that Balrog match because if you remember how it ended, he was like doing really well. It went down to the last game, to the like last round, I believe it was, almost last round, and then mm-hmm. Smug got in one jump in. He had V trigger, activated, punch, 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 punch into super, and Chris G lost like 65% of his life. In that comment. And not and not only was it a jump, and wasn't it a jump fierce through Giles crouching fierce? Like he tried the anti air. Might have been something like that. I think yeah. it was. It certainly did happen at some point. But okay. uh, yeah, that was tough for him. He won Marvel though, so not a terrible day. Uh, <laughs> it was nice for Alucard. He you know got fifth in his pool at Dreamhack, and he got fourth yeah. in the tournament this time. So that's yeah. quite a step up. Yeah. Very nice to see. Uh, Vagabond, you know, from Texas originally, not living there now, but uh, still really, really good. That was cool. I'm sure we'll see more of him. 
And then this Marn character. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what happened to Marn, but but Martin Fan showed up all, all of a sudden right, after not right. having seen him for a long time. Exactly. And uh, the yeah, other... he was he was this cautious guy, uh, relatively anyway. I talked with him about it actually, and and he said that um, he's been playing against Justin so much. We beat in this tournament. To, to a limit. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, but he's been playing against him so much that Justin is like the kind of player that will like whittle off your risky bad habits because he is so patient. Right. And in a long okay, set, okay, like he, okay. like if you do crazy stuff, he is just gonna punish you for that consistently. Right. Two out of three, two out of five is a kind of a different story. It's very rare that people beat Justin in a long set. Um, so he's been playing against Justin so long, so much he said that he's basically become conservative uh huh, relatively so okay. i don't know that's what he said <laughs> well more power to him he did really well here uh fifth place uh with abuki and maybe he's thinking about going back to armika a little bit more right so yeah um uh and then lud you know with chun Li, yeah uh, and and he tried the calling in as well i hope that the calling comes in more you know he's not high on chun Li. i don't think anybody is but it'd be great if he had a secondary, and even if, say, like, Chun-Li gets buffed at some point, only well, might get buffed at some point, too. Mm -hmm. Or nerfed, I mean, who knows? But it's it's good to have two characters that are both potentially viable, just yeah. in case, like, one yeah. gets nerfed, one gets buffed, you never know. And I was glad that he actually tried her, because you gotta start using your secondaries in tough situations like this to really yeah. learn them, so... Um... Yeah, and then Alex Vaya, yeah, man, he... You played a bunch of Colleen in, in uh, the <laughs> first day of the tournament, and then went to Rashid whenever he lost, and which was most of the time. Right. And his Rashid did basically the trick. Dude, he said he was so mad too because he was like, "Man, I was playing off stream, and every time I used Colleen, I was like potting everybody. Everything was working. Right. Then when they played on stream, they would go crazy, and I had to switch to Rashid. He was mad. He really wanted to show off as Colleen on stream, but I guess he couldn't yeah. do it. So didn't work. But yeah, okay. <laughs> that was that was all really good, oh, and then, uh, did you watch any of the Red Bull Proving Grounds qualifier stuff? No, I did not get a chance. Although I heard it was mirror match hell. Um, I heard oh. El Cubano Loco, who was there, lost the two Vegas, and uh, Vagabond lost the two Nicalis. <laughs> oh bummer! But yeah. Smug won that one too. Oh, did he? Oh, okay, he okay. So he won two tournaments in one day. You know what's cool, though, is that Happy Medicine got second place. Oh, really? And, okay. Yeah, um, I hadn't seen Happy Medicine since Street Fighter 4, huh. and not even, like, at the end of Street Fighter 4, but, like, a while before. Right. So it, he he was always so talented, and he didn't travel that often, but when he did, he did well, and mm -hmm. there you go, second place. So I thought that was awesome. Happy Medicine was, like, didn't he beat Flo one year in, like, Marvel or Street Fighter or something like that? I, can't I don't know if he was into Marvel like that, but... Uh, yeah, he might have beaten Flo. He beat a lot of good people okay, with okay. Bison. He, he had one of the best Bisons in the U.S. in Street Fighter 4. Okay, okay. Um, but yeah, so, uh, I mean, obviously the biggest thing about this is Smug finally taking a ranking event. And in fact, someone pointed out at the very end of the stream, they put up a little graphic. This is basically the first CPT event he's won, period. Like, they said, yeah. like, since 2014, I guess? But, you know, wasn't that like a... Was that like the 2050? I don't know. Like, it just doesn't even feel like that was a CPT year. That feels like it was so long ago. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, nice work. Yeah, good job to Smug. So uh, For sure. let's uh, go through some of these other results over here. Uh, well, in the Red Bull Proving Ground uh, qualifier, uh, seventh places were Azid and Verse. Fifth places were Guilty and Dr. African. Fourth place was Nova Spec, the same Fong that almost made top eight. And yeah. third place was Pit 84 with Nikali. But yeah, as you mentioned, second place, um, Happy Medicine. And first place, Smug. So there you go. Uh, yeah, and, and just, just a little bit of a note about the Red Bull Proving Grounds. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's a sort of local thing. Right. It's, yeah, a, yeah, it's yeah. an ongoing series. Anybody can enter any of the individual events. Mm -hmm. But since it's an ongoing series and the winners of the overall season are the ones who end up, you know, winning the season, <laughs> it's a long-term thing. If you're there for just one week, then you're not going to win the overall season. So that's that's why Red Bull doesn't prevent people who oh, aren't from right. the region mm -hmm. from entering. But, I mean, to be honest with you, though, I mean, 
if the other guys split it enough, maybe, you know, may, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> it's only one out of the, out of the yeah, series. Yeah, it's true. So Most likely not, it's not going to happen. So Yeah, it's not something to worry about. Yeah. Oh, some people are actually mentioning that uh, Punk is going to NLBC this week, so that should be fun. Okay. Uh, yeah. But uh, for more results here in uh, at Texas Showdown, Killer Instinct was a KI World Cup qualifier. Um, seventh place was Julio and Faya Liga, uh, both with Ripter, actually. Uh, fifth place was Zip Master Flex with Omen and Icewater714 with Kim Wu. Oh, dang, I missed that. I would have liked to have seen that, actually. Uh, fourth place was UA Base with Spinal. Third place, uh, Raven is Raw with Spinal as well. Second place, Water Horses with Glacius. The only person I feel like who's been using the same character the whole time except for Fialiga. And then first place is uh, Circa Nikki with Mira. So. Yeah, yeah. And it doesn't mention it here, but Bass played a bunch of Cinder as well. Mm -hmm, yeah. Uh, that Ra was... Raven is Raw was only Spinal as far as I know. Okay, I think he okay. still just plays Spinal. Okay. Um, yeah, that, that game has a lot of people who play multi-characters. But at the same time, there are a bunch of people who play only the one, like Raven is Raw, right. Water Horses, uh... I don't know. I guess there's a there's a lot of dudes I can think of who who still do that. But right, right. Um, yeah, Nikki went Mira, and uh, she's very strong for sure. And he played he played really well. Uh, and I remember when people were talking about him beginning to win with Fulgor. Mm -hmm. How you know it was Fulgor? Fulgor was crazy. <laughs> he was very good. He was very good, no doubt. Dude, but what everybody it was always. Nikki, you know. He was the only full guard doing that stuff, and now he's the only Mira doing this stuff. Right. So. Everyone and, always tries to do that, right? Like, it's always the character. Like, I've even heard some people saying that Smug won because Balrog is so good, you know, kind of deal. Okay. But, like, you see them play. Like, it definitely like, plays into it, but it's a. Anybody could be doing that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, so it takes the person to play a good character. You're, it's not often the case that a person plays a bad character and wins a tournament, sure. But many people play viable characters in tournaments and not many people win tournaments and Nikki wins a bunch of them <laughs> with full gore and now with, with Mira. So yeah, yeah. that's how it is. Yeah. I mean, even like when Sonic Fox was using Batgirl, right? Like everyone thought, Oh, it just has a broken character, but then eventually yeah. he just won everything with any character. So there you go. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Uh, Guilty Gear Exert Revelator, which I actually got to commentate, which was super awesome. Super happy Sick. about that. That was a lot of fun. Um, seventh place was uh, Frosty Fausting's Elven Shadow with Faust, of course. Uh, seventh place was also Nakiel with uh, Soul Bad Guy. Uh, fifth place, Decline with Sin, as well as um, Hamad, uh, former Fei Long player in Street Fighter yeah. 4 with Kai. Uh, fourth place was Silent Assassin with Bedman. Third place, Beautiful Dude with Zato. Uh, second place, Fables Kid Viper with Johnny. And now, today... I can say first place was Fables Kizzy K uh, with Sin oh. Kisk. Yeah. So he was actually just signed today by the same hey. group that signed Kid Viper. So there you go. <laughs> All righty. Nice. Yeah. I, I joke that they're pulling an Echo Fox on the, on the Guilty Gear community <laughs> right now. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, man. But yeah, no, this was really awesome to watch. And Kizzy K, he also won Blaze Blue, which we'll get into a little bit later. But that guy... I'm glad he's sponsored now because obviously he's he's won Blaze Blue and Guilty Gear in like three tournaments recently. It was like this NCR and Northwest Majors. That guy has been on a ridiculous tear, and I think it was um was it Zidane who said this that like since he woke up in the you know from his sleep screaming I'm not shook like he's won everything. So like <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> oh man. Okay. But yeah, no, nice was... job to Hamad for switching games. Uh, he doesn't really like Street Fighter V, right. but he likes gear. And uh, man, all right, I guess he's already good at that game, so yeah. good stuff. Yeah, and uh, let's see here. Yeah, but again, like also congratulations to Beautiful Dude. I'm just, I'm obviously biased because they're from, you know, Kizzy and Beautiful Dude from SoCal. But it's interesting because it literally went SoCal, Houston, SoCal, Houston uh, with the top four. But a beautiful dude, it took him, like, this ridiculous comeback against uh, Hamad. Like, that match went down to the wire. And it almost looked okay. like that there was no chance for beautiful dude to win in the last round. But he had the most ridiculous comeback, and he was able to take it. So 
Good job to them. Good job to all, all right. the players Sweet. there. So, okay, uh, Marvel versus Capcom three. Seventh place was Milky and Ketsui. Fifth place was Noel. Uh, Noel be hungry and Jan. Fourth place was Zebu with uh, Zero Doom and Dante. Third place Terry Bogard with Morgan Dante Strider. Second place K Brad with Team Devil May Cry. And first place was Christie with Morgan Doom Virgil as usual. So uh, yeah, there are a bunch of folks who might not be surprises in there. Chris K Brad, <laughs> yeah. Jan, Fourth at Evo, uh, still strong, obviously. K Brad is Noel's a been good. Player, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I, I just want to. By the way, I really like Milky as well, and and I heard that he's like a relative up and comer, so I thought oh, that was really cool wow. to see. Okay, okay. And then Ketsui, do you see that team? Strong uh, Morgan Chuma. Oh dang! Oh, you know what? He was the guy that was. Um, yeah, he told me he was like, I don't know how I got in the top eight because he was one of the guys that hey. was trying to get me to play Tetris Splash with him all weekend long. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Yeah. That's funny. But no, I, I watched his team and. It actually works better than you would think. It's hilarious. He has That's some cool awesome. soul steel combos. It's, That's awesome. It was cool. And when so he got uh, sent out by Jan, mm-hmm. and that was a really fun, super oh, yeah. unusual matchup. Okay. There were there were some Shuma anchor mirrors that happened <laughs> that you never see. So it was that was that was if if you only watch that, I think that was worth a watch. Nice, nice. Okay, yeah, I will I will try to check that out. Uh, but yeah, Ketsui had Tetris Splash on an Xbox 360 in the back, and he, he and Scrubex wanted to challenge me to some Tetris, so I thought that was funny. Uh, but no, uh, I didn't get to see most of Marvel, so uh, uh, but I'll definitely have to go back and try to check those out. Uh, for King of Fighters 14, fourth place was Marco Polo, uh, third place was Laek, uh, second place Violent Kane. And first place was Paco, with Mai Luang and Mwemwe, or Mai Meitzenkun and Luang. So there you go. Um, Oh, man. uh, For Mortal Kombat, seventh place was Cusco and Glolar Bears. Is that supposed to be Glolar Bears? (laughs) Okay. It is. Okay. Uh, Fifth place was Cory the Dragon and Gnarly Gato Alex. So far, MK is starting to win for the nicknames right now. Um, <laughs> fourth place was Deoxys243. Third place was BXA Star Charger. Second place, Fox Scar. And first place was Black with Hellfire Scorpion. Now, obviously, given the names, you would think that Scar would be the favorite to win that. But uh, Black took it over Scar. Not only that, but he's the one who sent Scar to loser's mm-hmm. side, so he beat Scar twice. Okay, nice. Do you yeah, know- it's not just nice; it's like really pretty, pretty excellent. Uh, <laughs> Black Black doesn't travel that much. Um, I was talking with him a bit. He said that he he actually mostly plays online nowadays. Oh, really? Um, okay. Okay. Yeah, but he was super good. Uh, that was that was awesome. Okay. Uh, I mean, is he is he yeah. from Houston area? Ooh, is he from Houston? I don't recall, but I know okay. he, he did say he's from Texas. Okay, okay, gotcha, gotcha. But, I mean, he was a known player before, right? It wasn't just, like, a kind of sneak in there. I mean, I've heard the name once or twice, but but not in a long time. Okay. And there was another, he used to go by another name, and now I don't recall. Uh, okay. I don't know if anybody in the chat remembers, but uh, he was he was uh, previously, like, a good. Just what I have expected him to be, Scar, maybe not. Right. Uh, no. w- is 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 Hellfire Scorpion supposed to be good right now, or? Some people think Hellfire Scorpion's really good. Okay. But okay. a lot of people think that the character is is like okay, but like not top tier or anything. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I don't know. There's different opinions. Uh, okay. But you know, he just he was patient and he controlled the stage. And the thing is about that character is that uh, it threatens uh, teleports constantly, mm-hmm. and. And so you're looking for that, but if you're looking for that, then he has an unblockable flame that he brings out of the ground. So if you're like caught too, looking too much at the teleports, then he'll hellfire you. Right. And his splitsies are super sick because he has his flame on, which catches from a giant hitbox right. if right. you try to poke into it. So uh, yeah, he definitely has stuff. Definitely okay. has stuff. Cool, cool, nice. Um, okay. Uh, anything else you wanted to say about Mortal Kombat? Oh man, it was cool to see me old 
War God Kodokan one last time. <laughs> Before Injustice comes out. Before and Injustice. MK is... And he officially dies forever. <laughs> oh, that makes me sad. Me um, too. Me too. Believe me. Uh, Blaze Blue Central Fiction was also played uh, this weekend uh, there. Uh, Milk Kaicho got seventh along with Yushiro. Fifth place was Flux and Nanakio. Uh, fourth place was Master Steph. Third place, Beautiful Dude. So he got two third places. Nice. Two third places. Uh, second place was Shinku with Rachel. And first place, Kizzy K with Jin. So literally, Kizzy, the two SoCal guys, got the same places in both tournaments. Pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah, I remember, too, talking to Beautiful Dude. He actually said he was really surprised he got third place in Guilty Gear. But he was really, really happy. So, But, uh, yeah, third place here in Blaze Blue as well. So... Nice. And then there was also a Smash Brothers for Wii U tournament that was won by Grim Turtle with Bayonetta. So, and that is the results for Texas Showdown. It's very cool to hang out with some of the Texas folks there, and we talked a bunch about olden days. I talked with Chris Wong for quite a while. <laughs> uh, old old school player from a million years ago yeah. who uh, uh, owned an important arcade in <laughs> Houston and still comes and hangs, but you know doesn't play like he used to, of course. Right, right. Uh, but it was just cool to hang out. You know, it was, it was really nice. And we hung out with Raph a little bit. Speaking of, just wanted to give a shout out to my man Raph. Oh, yeah. <laughs> for this excellent gift. Oh, man. Nice, nice. Yes. Yeah. I mean, yes. I, I got to do commentary with him on Guilty Gear and a lot of people thought we did a good job together. I mean, the the one thing, the one critique I heard, which was absolutely, I noticed it too, is sometimes we would talk over each other, but that's what happens when two people are kind of new uh, with each other. You know, it's, it's always hard to not have that happen when you're commentating with people for the first or second time. But uh, I thought it went really well. And yeah, Raf is really up and coming in terms of commentary for Guilty Gear and for Street Fighter. I remember he got to do Street Fighter last year at Evo, so that was super cool. Yeah, he did the uh, Red Bull thing as well. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool, cool, nice. <laughs> yes, I am not nerd enough to, to know what that reference is. So. Yeah, apparently there's also an alliance, that if it's like reversible, and oh, there's yeah, the alliance yeah. one in there, but uh... that will never see the light of day. <laughs> it's funny. Oh, man. All righty. I don't, know, else to say I don't know the about, significance of that, of alliance or whatever the opposite of alliance is, but it's okay. Whatever the opposite of alliance is, yeah, that's my exactly. team. Okay. It's teams, right? That's what we're talking about? Teams. I think so. I guess. Clans? Uh, alliances? I don't know. But Yeah. Video games. Okay. In any case, um... <laughs> Uh, do you want to go on to some other events, or do you want to take a break and then come back and talk about more stuff? Um, yeah, we might as well finish the events, I guess, yeah? Okay. Uh, well, there is a possibility that I might try to squeeze, uh, uh, oh, wait, no, never mind. Tasty said that he would try to get on, but he says he got bodied. Hang on a second. Oh. Uh, let me text him really quick. And see what he says. Uh, okay, well, let's just keep going on to some of the other events then while I wait for Tasty Steve to respond because I, I would like to get his uh, input on the Tekken banning stuff if he could. Yeah, uh, if he, if he could sure. jump on the Skype. So, um, but let's keep going here first. Uh, you want to talk about the Coliseum or do you want to talk about Fighter Spirit first? Whichever one you prefer. All right, let's do the Coliseum here. Uh, please load up web page. There we go. So the Coliseum was the ranking event that took place in Europe this weekend. Uh, a lot of players. This one had a lot more international players. It's always funny because it always feels like the Asia players are like it's easier to travel to Europe ranking events than it is to travel to the U.S. ranking events. So uh, they definitely came out here. There was a bunch of them out here. Uh, but uh, let's go over the top eight here. Seventh place was Will Tupac with Laura and Shakes with uh, Cami and Laura. <laughs> Laura is so popular in, in, in the EU, and it's just not yeah. as popular in the U.S. for some reason. Uh, fifth place was Pax with Karen and Infused Affy with uh, Laura. Fourth place was Mr. Crimson with Dalsum. 
Third place from Taiwan, Zowie's Oil King with Rashid. And uh, second place was Nasser Big Bird with Ken. And first place with Nash, with Cut Off Legs Nash, was Red Bull's Bonchan. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, Bonchan is a great player. That yeah. is obvious. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But still, very impressive stuff. He plays it. He plays it more offensively. I mean, there are matchups where he still zones a bit, but right. in t- mm-hmm. typical play, he uh, he plays it much more offense heavy. Which you know, if you recall, when he played Sagat, it was not always projectile zoning. Yeah, there were definitely yeah. matchups when he went in instead. So you can well, see that influence. Interesting. But, well, interesting little remark here from GTO Akira, our man in the chat. He said Bonchan went seven zero in his group and only lost one game in top thirty two, and that was against Oil King. Yeah, wow, that's, okay. That's ridiculous, dude. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, Big Bird, everybody knows he is an excellent player. Uh, I'm happy that he can travel more often because he's been consistently yeah. doing well. Didn't he just get second at another event in Europe? Uh, I can't remember. Yeah, he did. Well, he got somewhere. He did. Yeah, he got somewhere up there. But, yeah. I mean, what do you think what this means about Nash? Like, so... Someone even messaged me afterwards, is like, so about this Nash win, you know, a lot of people are saying Street Fighter Five, you have to pick a top tier, you have to have secondaries and all this stuff like that. You know, Daigo wasn't able to make Ryu work, Infiltration is like, can't find a character. But then here's, here's Bonchan winning with Nash, a character everyone has just said was like one of the worst in the game after the patch. I mean, wh- what does that mean to you? Like, is, do you think there's anything to take, take away from that? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, um, I mean, clearly Nash is not as bad as I, as we first thought he was, mm-hmm. uh, I think that's, that's a big one. At the same time, the game is not that imbalanced, it's, right. you know, Alex and, and maybe Fang, I guess, are on the southern end of things, but them aside, maybe just a couple of other characters aside, I mean, look, Chun-Li just got top eight as well. Like, yeah. th- there's really only a few characters who I don't think can be tournament viable. Uh, I'm not sure anybody else really would win tournaments with Nash other than Bon Chen, maybe yeah. Pong, I don't know. Right. But this this is an interesting set of results because, uh, let, let me look at the top four-ish, I guess. Nash, Ken, Rashid is excellent. And then Dalsum. Nash, Ken, and Dalsum, like not many people would have those in their top ten. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. For right. Sure. Uh, I don't know if anybody does, and and that's that is very impressive that mm-hmm. all those guys are doing that kind of work, and uh, so so I think on the one hand this this shows that maybe the game is actually pretty well balanced, um, not perfectly but pretty well balanced. Alternatively, it shows that Europe is garbage. <laughs> What do you think about that? Anything about, about top three not being from Europe and three out of the top four placers not using top tier characters? Oh, man. I mean, since Street Fighter V came out, Europe has definitely, I feel like, struggled a little bit. It's really mostly Phenom, right, that's doing really well. Yeah, Phenom, Luffy. Those are, those are two of the best players in the world, absolutely. Oh, yeah, and Luffy, of course. Yes, yes, yes. After that? I don't know, man. I don't know. (laughs) Damn. I'm not saying they're bad. I mean, maybe if you could, like, make a little lower third, uh, what are those called? Crichtons or something? Uh Um, Whatever that word is. Maybe it would have a question. Is Europe garbage? (laughs) Not saying. Not saying that Europe is garbage, but... Is Europe garbage? Oh, I don't know. Oh, let's Not see. sure. Uh, Iron. That's what it is. Yes. What is it? C H I R O N. Oh, that's what it is. Right. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I, I don't. I don't really think that they're bad. I think it's. I think it's much more likely that. Uh, I mean, like, Oil King does well when he comes to the U.S., right. so Bon Chan. Uh, uh-huh. Brick Bird hasn't been here in a while, but he would definitely do that as well. So those those guys are, are up there, regardless of, yeah, of where yeah, you are. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah, I mean, if you look at the results here, I mean, just outside of there, I mean, it's interesting. The, the results are a little interesting because Problem X and I'm Still the Daddy were tied for ninth place, right? But 
Luffy tied for 13th place. So Luffy didn't yeah. even do that well in this in in this event at all. Oh, well, can't win them all, I guess. Yeah, interesting. Okay, well, I mean, look, Bonchan is ridiculous, right? Bon Bonchan, like you said, probably one of the only guys who could make Nash work like that. But to be honest with you, right now, I still stand by my claim that the only character that's terrible in this game is Ryu. <laughs> I think Alex is terrible. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I guess. But dude, has there no. been a Ryu anywhere? Like nobody uses him. At they least like we have all dropped. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. But I, I, I would I would say though that I think a lot of the people who were using Ryu in season one used him because he was felt to be good. Right. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. So I think there was a lot of bandwagoning with that character and that a lot of the people who thought he was good played him because he was good and now he's not good, so they left. I think that's a big part of it, but yeah. at the same time, yeah, I don't think he's good. I don't think he's good either. Okay. okay. Hopefully, the buffs will help him. We'll see what happens there. Uh, I don't think there was any other events at the Coliseum that took place. Let's see if I can scroll through this web page because every time, I guess they told that people said that the latest X Split uh, update like made. Like it, like if you run XSplit and then it makes like the the web pages run slow or something like that. But uh, all right, let's move over to fighting Fighter Spirit, which was another event. This one took place in Korea, in Asia over there, and uh, this was also a ranking event. And uh, players such as uh, X Y Z Z Y tied for ninth place. Uh, in seventh place was Cyclops uh, Goichi using Ibuki and Chun-Li, as well mm -hmm. as, I'm just going to say Byung Byung with Birdie, right? B-B-Y-O-N-G, uh, B-B-Y-O-N-G, Byung Byung. Uh, fifth place was Mago with Karin, and Verloren with Kami. Fourth yep. place was Punko using exclusively Colleen. Uh, third place was NL with Kami. Second place was D&G Tachikawa with Ibuki, and first place, now it's listed as Ken as a and Ibuki, but I heard Momochi played only Ken at this event. But Momochi, Echo Fox Momochi, took first place at this uh, Korean event. Yeah, I also heard that he only played Ken. And I'm hearing in the chat that Infiltration went 0-2. Is that a Ooh. fact? Yeah, Infiltration has actually said, like, he's like... But he lost in pools for sure, at least. Yeah, he's, he definitely had a tweet. He was just like, I don't know what's up. Like, I can't figure this out. Uh, I, I heard he used Karen. I heard he used Karin or Karen. You know, well, I heard that was the character. Yeah, he did not he go using. on two, but oh, he did not go still on two. Lost, lost in pools. Yeah, yeah, that's that's tough times. I hope that he's not sticking with Jerry. We mentioned we were talking about bad characters before, and I feel like Jerry's in that list too. Yeah, that's um, true. For a while, he was saying, or some people were saying that they thought she was okay. Uh, I didn't see it at the time, and I still don't see it. Yeah, so. yeah, it's I don't just know. too much work. Building all those things for almost like yeah. insignificant gains, you know what I mean? It's like, and the problem yeah. with it is, it's not like a Buki who who can like knock you down and charge four kunai. Like right. Jerry's literally like spend. Okay, gotta charge up. Spend got exactly. like it's almost like she should be able to charge up like jam, like charge up three of them. Sure. You know what I mean, yeah. or something like that. She, like she she spends a lot of time trying not to be bad, and then mm -hmm. when she's not bad, she's like okay, but she's never good. I mean, she like she spends a lot of time building up the charges and the V skill. If she started around with all of those things, maybe she'd be better. But even mm -hmm. still, then she's spending a lot of time after that trying to regain any kind of momentum or safety or yeah. I don't it, know. It, it's funny because like I've even seen some people say it's very similar to Hakan's oil. You know, like she should just start with everything. Like they changed Hakan to start with oil, and I think that's funny because Jiri and Hakan came out the same time and. Sounds like they combined the characters together into one character now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, her her buffs that she gets from charging are not even close to Hakan yeah, being uh, able to do all the nonsense agreed, that that guy agreed, can do. Agreed. So, uh, Chat being able to start the round with charges and Street Fighter 4 fireballs? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Alright, well, uh, that was there. But yeah, I, I did hear that Momochi won it exclusively with Ken and he was yeah. like just doing ridiculous whiff punishes and stuff like that so just typical but actually so I mean 
what do you think Infiltration's issue is right now outside? Okay, let's throw this out there, right? He's getting married, so he has a lot of things on his mind. He's got a lot of things to take yeah. care of and everything like that. But do you think that there's another problem outside of that? Because since Evo, Infiltration's, you know, dominance and strength really has kind of faded. Oh! Well, I, I think he, uh... Yeah, I brought my cats over to James's place today. Uh... <laughs> He, uh, he doesn't like the game. I think that is pretty clear. And he's not... Even on top of that, uh, I don't know that he's like put in the time. It just doesn't seem like somebody is as strong as he is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I feel like the only way that you're losing is if you're not putting in the time and if you hate what you're doing. Right, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, I really feel like that's it. Like it's not. It's not like a question of like, you know, Justin won a lot of tournaments, and then he's, like, getting ninth or seventh, right, rather than, like, or fifth, rather than winning tournaments still. Mm -hmm, That's mm -hmm. a different question, right? right. Justin is doing well. Mm -hmm, he's mm -hmm, not going, mm -hmm. he's not losing in pools. So, right. you know, to go from winning EVO to losing in pools is, is a giant swing. So I, I don't know, man. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I hope he figures it out. Or alternatively, if he doesn't like the game, maybe pick up, you know, gear or Injustice is coming out right. or whatever. Okay. Pick, you okay. know, Tekken. Plenty of other games out there. I've even heard that, um, what was it? That, well, he said Ed looked really interesting to him. So who knows what what that'll be like. We'll talk about sure. Ed in a little bit. So, Yeah. Uh, how's Ajax doing? Oh, he's hilarious. Aw. I'm glad. See, you get Say hello to James. You can actually, like, hold. Oh. <laughs> you can actually hold the cat like that. Like, my cats get mad when I try to hold them like that, depending on how sleepy they are. <laughs> Oh, man. He's dancing. He likes being here so much. Uh, that's so funny. That's so funny. Uh, anyway, there was another uh, tournament you wanted to talk about? Uh, there actually was. Let me pull this up here. Uh, someone actually sent this to me via DMs, and he just really wanted to, uh, you know, talk about this because, um, uh, let me see if I can find it here. Uh, the guy wanted to talk about this tournament that took place in the Czech Republic called uh, Button Check. Ooh, um, oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, it's a great name, dude. That's just a great name. Uh, but uh, he has results and videos. You can actually check it. Uh, what's this link here? It's like medium.com slash... But oh, you can find all the information at buttoncheck.com, which is obviously C-Z-E-C-H, buttoncheck.com. Here, let me change the let me pay, change the scroll before everyone's like, why is Europe still dead or garbage? Um, let's see. There you go. Buttoncheck.com. So you can actually check the results there. Uh, but they had a bunch of tournaments over there in Street Fighter V. Uh, fourth place went to DH Kurt JC. Third place was K Jim. Second place was RMZ Ramshaft who uh, also does a lot of beginner Guilty Gear streams as well, so you guys should follow him on Twitter. Uh, but first place was IG Xerox. And then for Guilty Gear Revelator, uh, fourth place was uh, Cat Pion Sin Main That Uses Soul. Like, literally, that's the name. Rad. <laughs> uh, Korn Forlski uh, was in third place. Second place was uh, Pepis Bunker PRK. And first place was PIDA, and what he P I D A, and what he said about the Guilty Gear players here, um, that these two top players are in fact uh, some of the best players in Europe. Period. And, okay. Uh, basically, they said that they do well in Guilty Gear pretty much, um, you know, throughout Europe. So there you go. So uh, shout outs to Tim for that information there, getting us that information there. Uh, there was also a UMVC3 tournament. Uh, Hard Edge Healing Care got third. Uh, second place was J.O.B. Velaferis, who um, is a person that I've talked to a lot on Twitter because he's a Felicia fan. So he actually got second place with a Felicia team, so good job wow. to him. Uh, first wow. place was Garuda. And Velafer it was really interesting, too, because Velaferis actually sent me a clip of the, that tournament. And he said that he, it was interesting because, you know, from talking and hearing us talk about fighting games a lot, a lot of times, 
he said he could actually pinpoint the one moment he lost the tournament and which where he just got careless did a yolo you know vajra with with a uh, strider that was punished and he did it basically for no reason but he wow. was he was actually in winner's bracket of grand finals and uh garuda reset and beat him at the end so Dang. i thought that was actually kind of interesting uh, Blaze okay. Blue, third place was Rad, fourth place was Corn Forolski, and uh, first place was VDV Owner. But yeah, that was um, Button Check, and uh, you should be able to find like all the videos and stuff like that online and uh, at buttoncheck.com that you can see down here. So That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Hey, do you know what the Felicia team is? He was using Felicia, Strider, and I don't remember who the last character was now that I... I'm trying to remember because I think he was only oh, like down. Strider Doom or something. I mean, that would be that would be what that was my best Felicia team, not my right. best Felicia team. Actually, it was probably my own K one. I was terrible at Doom and Strider, but right. Like, but I remember talking about it. Yeah, but I think that is the best Felicia team. So yeah. I think that's the best Felicia team. Um, but yeah, uh, there was like you said, there was also all the Red Bull Proving Grounds events that were this weekend. There was Umabura Japan, and then, oh, that's right, there was also the uh, KSB happened right before uh, all the stuff happened during the weekend, which is the right. KVO and Team Stickbug collaboration event, and that one was, uh, that one was crazy. Hang on a second, let me get the results out there. Let me get the KSB results here. Uh, interesting, it's not on any of the... Uh, the, the, the normal sites here but uh this was the one that had a ton of dude it's all the smash brothers results I, i'm getting all the, <laughs> the smash brothers results first oh man um but i mean it was obviously a lot of players from america traveled there a lot of players went there like i know ryan hunter was there minus was out there Cool. Uh, Biscuits was out oh, there. Cool. A whole bunch of the guys went out there. And uh, I know that uh, Omito won it. Omito with Johnny. He, he took that whole entire event. So uh, let me see. I see Melee single. God, come on, Smash Sites. All you have are the, are the, are the results. Shoot. Come on, come on, come on. All right, let's do KVO cross TSB 2017 results. Does anybody have a link to the results anywhere? Oh, here we go. Okay, it was just listed there. Okay, I got it. I got it. Okay, so here we go. So Guilty Gear results. Seventh place were Tomo with Leo and DC with Sin. Uh, fifth place was Day with Elfelt and Lox with Jam. Fourth place was Cha 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 with Kum Hye Hyun. Uh, third place was Turio with Ino. Second place, Ogawa, of course, with Zatoichi. And first place, Omito with Johnny. Uh, I do plan to try to like watch these matches and like analyze them. So hopefully I'll be able to do that on stream. But the one thing that someone pointed out that was super cool is this was all played on Rev 2, by the way. So this was actually uh, a Rev 2 tournament. They played on the updated version of it. Top eight, eight different characters. Oh, eight, nice. Johnny, Zato, Ino, Kum, uh, Elfelt, Jam, Leo, and Sin. And under there was a Faust, a Chip, a Chip, Amelia, a Raven, a Kai, an Elfelt, and a Raven. So in the top 16, there's like 12 different characters. So, that's awesome. So that's really, really impressive. So there you go. Yeah, and everyone says the matches were amazing. I didn't actually get to see a lot of them, but I definitely am going to go back and watch those and try to analyze them on stream at some point in time. So. Sure. Um, Smash Brothers 4. Uh, the results there were Renai with Villager and Masashi with Cloud. Uh, fifth Dick. place were Edge with Diddy Kong and Sigma with Toon Link. Fourth place was Earth with Corin, uh, or Corin, I should say. I'm getting all my Street Fighter and all this stuff mixed up. God, there's yeah. a Cor. Okay, anyway, third place was 2GG Komo, Komo Rikiri with Cloud, Sonic, and Marth. Second place was Abadongo with Mewtwo and Bayonetta. And first place was Echo Fox's MK Leo or MK Leo with Cloud and Marth. So there you go. Uh, the melee results uh, 
Fourth place was Amsa with Yoshi. Sick. Amsa. That's good. I'm, I'm sad he didn't win. Uh, <laughs> Sane with, with Fox. Uh, Konotori with Falco and Fox. And first place was Yu with Falco. So there you go. Very cool. Uh, King of Fighters 14 was also played there. Uh, fourth place was Huomao uh, E.T. Uh, Akira was in third place. Second place was Tarezo. And first place, Koji K.O.G. with Nakaruru, really? Mature, and Verse. Yeah. It says Koji Kog. Koji Kog. That's what it says. Koji K.O.G. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I believe you. I'm just surprised at the first couple characters there. Right. I think it'd be, like, entirely big bodies, but... Okay. I'm trying to... Cool. You're... There's somebody you remind me of right now, the way you're doing that, so... Um, Blaze Blue, fourth place was Fenrich with Jin, Maki with Rachel, Toei with uh, Izanami, and first place was Kaibutsukun with Nine. They okay. also had a UMVC3 tournament there, RF got fourth place, Takumi Ooh. got third place, TMP Cross second place, and fourth, first place was... Mabushin, which is interesting because, you know, the other three have obviously traveled to the U.S. to play. Right. Uh, but uh, Mabushin, I don't know if he's come to the U.S. before. That name is not as familiar to me. Yeah, Daredevil. Daredevil. I, think, I think that's what it is. Daredevil. That's what it makes me think of. There you go. Daredevil? Oh. Hey, you know what makes sense? It's a lawyer, right? Come on. Matt Murdock. People uh, say that he looks like me anyway. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and then there was a Pokin tournament. Apollo, third place. Julius, second place, and Tanoshima, Tanoshimi, first place with Mewtwo and Lucario. Isn't Julius from the U.S.? Uh, he might be. I think he is, yeah. I mean, a lot, like I said, a lot of people traveled to this event. Obviously, That's really it, was, cool. it was streamed on uh, Team Spooky, uh, Ryan Hunter, Spooky himself, Biscuits, a whole bunch of guys did an English commentary on that. So, uh, again, great job to Alan, a.k.a. Stickbug, who, you yeah, know, sure. from New York, who's did a bunch of work. He's one of the leading guys for the community in Guilty Gear. He's um, He teamed up with KVO to put on this tournament, and this is like the third or fourth year they've been doing this now. So, yeah, and it's just, it, I, you know, obviously I'm biased because I'm a Guilty Gear guy, but, like, I just feel yeah, like Guilty it Gear is it's just, like, gaining so much steam right now. I just feel like a lot more people are playing it, and it's, like, getting a lot of really good publicity right now, so... Shout that continues. Yeah, shout outs to KVO Stickbug. Also, this weekend, however, one more result that I want to go through. Okay. Uh, sorry about that. But that was the ST tournament that took place this weekend. And had I not actually gone to. Uh, let me see if I can get that out here. I'm trying to find the, the name of that tournament. Let me get that URL back up again. Um, slash. Fight. So I'm using, so Malice is godlike who used to do the original calendar is back doing a calendar again. Nice, Most, yeah. Mostly kind of because of my pressure, which I feel bad because uh, it's a lot of work. Uh, but this last weekend was, um, oops, let me see. Uh, uh, this last weekend was also the, uh, oh, what? He just deleted like last week's information. Crap. <laughs> was ah oh, shoot please give me the name of that tournament it was just like kake kugoro or something like that and i can't remember uh what the whole name of it is like it was there and i think he oh you know what i have the old one that oh cool okay i have a cash version that he hadn't deleted the week yet it's the um it's the oh no i don't have it here crap never mind Oh, this is going great. Sorry about that. Uh, but there was an ST tournament, and a lot of people went there. A lot of the U.S. players went there. Uh, Silent Scope was out there. Um, obviously, Tanya and Eugene were out there, a.k.a. Uh, El Trouble and Killer Miller. I believe Damdai was out there as well. There was a bunch of people out there. So... Um, yeah, it was really cool. Uh, I didn't get to see who won, though. I didn't get to see who won. Uh, if I was actually here instead of at Texas Showdown, I probably would have done another one of those crazy, you know, middle-of-the-night restreams of it, but I didn't get a chance to do that, so. Okay. Um, but there you go. That was... Well, I got to... 
I gotta take a vicious whiz. So you want to take a break, and then uh, we'll come back and talk about Ed and other characters. Yeah, no problem. Oh, we didn't get a chance to talk about E League's results last week's either, but let's do that after the break. All righty, we'll be back in a bit. Okay, cool. I'm just gonna try calling him on the phone real quick. That's so weird. I don't know what happened. Yeah, I don't know either. Can people hear it? I'm sure people can hear David now. See, this is just my evil plan just so that I could use these David pictures again here on the stream. There we go. Man, I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. Can you still... Can... You can hear me, right? I can hear you. Okay. It's so weird, dude. I don't even know. I don't even know what's going on right now. So, all right. Well, do you want to just talk about E League results then, or, or? Yeah, go for it. Okay. She's and it was a uh, E League uh, Block C, right? Did we talk about this one already? Uh, I don't think so, because we watched it when we were at Texas Showdown. So. Oh, that's right. That's right. Okay. Okay. Um, does. Does Discord do um, video conference as well? Uh, I'm not sure, actually. I've never actually used Discord for that before, to be honest with you. So, okay. In any case, uh, here we go. Let's do uh, schedule and bracket. Here we go. So, group C. Where can I see the group C results? Here we go. Yeah, Discord is only voice chat. Yeah, that's what I thought. So, okay. So here we go. Let's talk about group C then. Uh, group C, obviously, uh, the players who qualified into that to stay in the winner side of the bracket, David, uh, this frozen David here off to the side, uh, yeah. were uh, Fudo and uh, Wolf Crone, right? They were the ones that were... That were uh, already in the winner side of the bracket in the later round. So in the first round, uh, Cien and Tokido had to play each other, and MOV and F-Champ had to play each other. Uh, Tokido beat Cien 3-2. to two. So that was a really, really close match there. Um, I think you're typing at me, maybe, or typing to somebody else. Oh, you can hear that? Man, that's annoying, because that on... On the PC, I have a, like an auto gate that gets rid of that, but I guess not on the phone. Oh, interesting. Okay, okay. Yeah, anyway. Um, and then uh, on the other side of that, uh, F champ beat MOV three to zero. Uh, did you actually get a chance to watch any of those replays yet, or anything? Negative. Like that? I have not. I have not. Okay. Well. Um, then that meant that Tokido and F Champ went to go play each other in the next round, and uh, Tokido beat F Champ three to one. Yeah, uh, uh, F Champ I know was not happy about how it all went. Uh, I mean, it was just a, it was a tough bracket. It was a tough pool to be in, you know. So he, right. one of those ex excellent players is not going to make it. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then in the loser side, uh, CN and MOV had to play each other, and CN beat MOV three to one, and that means that CN had to fight F Champ, and sure enough, CN ended up beating F Champ three to two. And I heard like F Champ, did they say like he threw off his headset or something like that? That's what I heard. Yeah. Um, okay. And then on the winner side, then Tokido made it through, so he got to play against Fudo. While Cien went to go play Wolf Crow. And uh, Fudo beat Tokido 3 to 1. And Cien beat Wolf Crow 3 to 2. And I heard Cien did, like, he didn't, like, have a, like, was there, like, sort of, sort of mini pop off or something like that that he had? I can't remember. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. When, when we were watching, it was only on the Twitch stream. So 
you know, after like a match ends, that like the stream basically it doesn't show anything. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. So I, I don't know. Uh, but then Wolf Chrome beat Tokido three to zero. So it, I, I still feel like Japan hasn't really figured out how to fight against Laura yet. Yeah, I think that's true. I also think that they're not really that they don't really believe that Laura is that great. But uh, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. It was it was surprising considering that he knows that Wolf Crone was somebody to beat in there. I would think right. that he would put in more time. But but yeah, I mean, even when you put in time, Wolf Crone's a very strong player. And Laura's right, pretty right. good. So yeah. And then of course, uh, Wolf Crone went on to play against Cien in a rematch. And uh, Wolf Crone beat Cien in the run back this time, three to two. And uh, I heard Wolf Crone taunted him or something like that. Like uh, I saw uh, people saying that Wolf Crone was kind of like disrespectful or something. Like I know his family was there and they were wearing funny meme shirts with Wolf Crone on it and everything like that. But then uh, like at some point in time, apparently like he taunted Cien or something like that. I. I I'm not remember. I can't. I don't. I mean, chat maybe can tell me if that's actually true or not. Uh, but I don't know. Did you actually hear anything about that? Yeah, I did not. Big Kahuna man in the chat actually says that he did taunt at the very end, and so uh, some people were actually mad about that. Okay, but uh, Wolf Crone. So that means that Wolf Crone and Fudo qualify. Fudo on the winner's side and Wolf Crone on the loser's side. There That's a go. tough pool to get through. Uh, you know, Fudo, like we said, when, when the group itself was done, mm -hmm. the uh, the round robin, Fudo was somebody I think a lot of people have expected to move forward. But other than that, I mean, who else would move on? It's just so many good players in that thing. Right. So I don't know. Um, but after seeing how well Wolf Crone played in the group stage, to see him move on after that is is not a surprise anymore. Right, yeah, uh -huh, exactly. Um, it's so funny, too, because I also saw Gustavo tweet out. He's like, am I the only person rooting for Wolf Crone? He was uh, like, I don't like, uh, I don't like you know, him as a person, but, you know, I like his play. His play is really good. Oh, yes, he's so. excellent, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and even in talking with some folks at Texas Showdown afterward, you know, people who in the past have, have not necessarily liked Wolf Crone or have had problems with him personally... I guess I won't expose them, but, but you know, people who folks know, uh, they all think he's an amazing player. Right. You know? And that's, okay. you know, they have, they have thought that for a long time. It's not a surprise to them that he does really, really well. And uh, he continues to do so. Okay. Well, there you go. So uh, looks like the moving on is going to be Wolf Corn and Fudo in E-League. So there you go. Uh, okay, I guess we can, whoops, I didn't change the highlights here, I'm too busy animating David right now, so, uh, let's go and move over to Ed, then, let's yep. talk a little bit about Ed, so, uh, we actually got to see the trailer for the first time at the same time, and, uh, yeah. Vi actually Snapchatted it, which was actually kind of That's right. Um, but, uh, what do you think of Ed so far? Oh, man, I think he looks, I think he looks cool, uh. I really want to find out if his V skill is command grab or hit grab. I don't know. Could be like Ryda, or it could be like, more like Birdie's chain. Maybe it's people right. are liking it too. Yeah, uh -huh. exactly. You know. Um, uh, by the way, I don't know if you just ran him aside. Did you see that Colleen's counter beats Birdie's chain from yeah. full screen? <laughs> yeah, I did. I did actually. That was very funny. Uh, yeah. Anyway, that, that's what I want to know. But other than that, I think he looks he looks cool. Uh, Looks like he has good movement. It looks like he has uh, his V skill. Sorry, his V trigger is a projectile that looks like allows him to approach a, a, a bit. So, or, or maybe control space because it looks like it moves very slowly. Right. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, really interesting uh, control ideas, though. I think that's probably the most unique thing about him, mm -hmm. from what we know at least right now. Okay. That is okay. that rather than having dragon punch or quarter circle or charge motions. All of his special moves apparently are just done by by button presses and releases. Yeah, uh, I saw that, and it was like it's interesting because like one of them is just like towards and a button is a special move. Then like two punches is another one. Two kicks is another one. One is like tapping button repeatedly, and then one of them is you just hold the button longer than a tap, and it turns into a special move instead. Yeah, I, I think that's I think 
that's really interesting. I, I like the idea of it. I want to see more experimentation in any game, including in Street Fighter Five, mm-hmm. and and it, it definitely sounds like they're doing that. Uh, you know, I know that some people are not happy about it, mm-hmm. but I just I want new things. And in one of the nice things about having new characters, part of why I want new characters, is that you can try things that you never have tried before so like it'd be weird if they brought back like Oro or you know whoever they want and then they just made his moves you know totally different that you can't really do that so you gotta do that with somebody new people would get mad I I like it yeah people would get mad if if Oro was like the only one like if they brought back a character and like changed him to all buttons like that but do you feel like that's an attempt for them to try to make easier execution characters even more easier execution characters maybe but on the other hand I don't know, it just depends on how it plays out. Maybe some of his things are, probably not. What if they're like one or two frame timings, though? You know, maybe right. they're uh-huh. more difficult. Maybe they're the, uh, maybe they're the execution timing things. I guess we'll see. Right, okay. Because um, someone even said, I forgot who it was who said it. They were saying, like, they feel like because of the way that he's set up like that, it's going to be, he might actually be pretty option select heavy. I think it was Fubarduck who said something yeah, it was. like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. That, that certainly could be the case. Yeah. But I like the idea. And uh, as far as the command grab, or well, the V skill being a command grab, <laughs> I don't think it would be that crazy. It just depends on what else he has going on for him. You know, I mean, because has... I, I mean, that looked like it reached pretty far. If that was a command throw, it I, think it, I think it would be super good. Yeah, probably would be, but on the other hand, what if it has tremendous recovery? I mean, like, I always, I always think of moves, right, like, okay, okay. in in uh, MK, you know, moves like Force Push or, or uh, in Injustice, like, Raven had, like, basically a full-screen, fast projectile that was invisible, right? It sounds okay, okay. ridiculous, right. but tremendous recovery, so that's the downside. So, I, I don't know, it just depends on, on what you have and... Whether he has any good footsie buttons or not, or whatever. I don't know. There's, I feel like there are ways that you could do it. Okay, okay. We'll see. Uh, I mean, I've been playing his theme music before the show started and, like, at the time, at, during the break and stuff like that. Did you actually get a chance to listen to that theme music? Mm-hmm. It's, it's, the, it's the rap song that you hear during the trailer. Oh, really? That's actually the theme? Yeah, that's actually apparently his background music, but it's pretty cool, so... Hmm. But, uh, yeah, I'm definitely curious to see how this character is going to turn out. I mean, he's going to be playable this weekend for the beta, right? So he's actually going to be there. So I'm actually really curious. I'm not even going to be able to have a chance to try it out, which makes me super sad. But uh, you'll be able to mess with him, right, Uh, on Mm -hmm. PS4 and and on... uh, Oh, that's right, he'll be gone. Yeah, yeah, I will. Okay, cool, cool. Okay. Uh, Any other thoughts that you want to say about Ed? Uh, No, but I am... I think it's hilarious how people found out about his images in the first place. Right? <laughs> yeah, they said it was just they went to the Capcom site and saw like you know the the picture for Balrog was a URL with Balrog in it, and so they're like, mm, Ed might be coming soon. Let's see what happens if we type in Ed. And sure enough, they found his images and they were leaked. So it's hilarious. Yeah. Oh man. Come okay. on. <laughs> you would think they would figure this out by now. Like, everyone no, does this no, every no. single this time, point, right? At this point, they definitely are not going to figure it out. I, oh, I don't, man. I don't see any chance that having not figured it out for, you know, all these years. I mean, remember when uh, Cross Tekken was leaked and they were just like, nah, they're not going to figure out that they're not going to hack this. You know, day one, it gets hacked to find out whoever, all the everybody's well, on All the, the DLC characters were on the disc. That yeah. was years ago. That was... Five years ago, and no, they, they haven't learned. They haven't learned. That's just not gonna. Okay. Oh man. Okay. I don't think particularly highly of uh, of a lot of the old Japanese section of things over there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't um... think that's controversial to say, but. <laughs> Well, uh, unfortunately, I don't think we're going to be able to get uh, Tasty Steve on here or anything like that through Skype or anything, especially since nothing is working, you know, uh, Skype isn't working anyway, so. Yeah, well, maybe after we take a break or whatever else, maybe we can try Skype during the break and see what's going on. Oh, yeah, that's true, that's true. Okay, okay. Uh, So do you want to just talk about this Tekken banning situation? 
Sure, yeah, if we can't get them on, yeah, then, then that's fine. Okay, hang on a second. Let me change the highlight here. So, how much do you know about this Tekken banning situation? Not much, man. So, here we go. Um, let me see if I can find the details of it. Um, but I can easily, I can talk about it. Uh, let me see here. I just want to get the names of the players correct, that's all. Um, I'm co really, I looked up Tekken banning, and it gave me something about travel ban from Trump. Okay. Um, Bummer. Shoot. What are the, the... Some people have the names of the players. King J. It was King J and somebody else. But basically what happened was that what they were both on the same team, right? Uh, Krizzle, I think that's what it is, yeah. So both of the players are actually on the same team. And one of them has qualified already. And the other one hadn't. And um, they ended up playing each other in another Tekken tournament. And remember last year they didn't let players enter the tournament if they had qualified already? I don't know if that changed this year. But um, they played each other in the tournament. And uh, there was a lot of people that claimed, apparently, that you could tell from the gameplay that the guy who already qualified threw the game to the other guy. And so yeah, basically started the collusion, right? And um, there was no hardcore evidence about this. Neither of them admitted it or anything like that. But as a result, both of them got their uh, qualifications revoked. And I guess they've been banned for the rest of the year or something like that. And so um, a lot of people are actually really mad about that because they feel like it was just because, one, it was based off of hearsay of like just watching the match. Although I've seen a lot of top Tekken players say, yeah, definitely something was going on in that match. But at the same time, like, there's no hard rule in the rules about collusion. They have to add it now after banning the people, you know? So, like, um, I don't know, a lot of people are mad, and even Markman went on record to say that he wasn't happy with the banning, that he thought that that was the wrong decision to make. And that uh, what they should do is change the rules so that the collusion can't be as easy to be done, right? So make it so that, for example, if you have qualified, you can't play in an event again. I don't know if that was changed for this reason, uh, this year. Yeah, someone actually uh, threw me a link here. Let me grab the link here just so I can get it. I mean, I watched, I watched the, I actually watched the match uh, during the part where they claimed collusion and everything like that. And there's definitely some fishiness going on. Like, he, the guy takes three hits the same move in a row. And then he comes back and hits the other guy, doesn't kill him. And then he just stops attacking. Like, he just starts dancing around and, like, dashes up and does nothing. And even the commentators were like, wow, he's playing really patient. Maybe a little too patient. And then he, event and then he eventually lost. And so a lot of people were saying that it was really, really kind of suspicious. But with no rule in the rule books already like that, and they have to add it now, like, as a, I mean, from your point of view as a lawyer, like, how does that sound to you? Like, do you feel like that shouldn't have happened? I mean, everybody pretty much understands the implication that you're not supposed to, to do this at this point. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's, uh, even if it's not explicitly in the rules, just from a like rule maker's point of view, I'm not saying that this is right, but yeah, I feel like there's not really an argument that you could say like, hey, I didn't know I wasn't supposed to collude. It's not really believable. <laughs> right, right. Um, but at the same time, you know, yeah, I was just watching the same clip. First of all, was he playing? Is like Gigas his main character? That's that's pretty sick. If so, <laughs> but, um, anyway. Uh, I just don't know enough about Tekken to be able to describe if it's if it's real or not. Right, right. You know, and even even when you're watching something that you do really understand, mm -hmm. still sometimes hard to really be sure if there is collusion or not. I've certainly seen sometimes when it's right. arguable. Sometimes when it's, I mean, the only times I can think of when it's super clear are if like at the start of the match. Remember at Showdown a billion years ago. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Chris and Justin just like random selected or something. Right. It was just like yeah, yeah, yeah. it was like uh, super obvious. But but that aside, 
it's, it's it can be hard to to describe so right. uh, uh let me let me play the clip on stream actually because some people are asking about that that they they, they, they oh they yeah say sure they want to see the clip on stream so let me see if i can uh, get that clip up here um real fast here uh let me do a screen capture I'm just going to capture this and block us, basically. And that'll let my arm rest a little bit. So um, here we go. So I'm going to play this clip here for you guys. Uh, let me make sure the volume is not too loud. Yeah, the reason I asked is because Gigas is not good. So uh, that was surprising. See right there. So like, let me go back again. So you see right here, he gets hit. Same move. And then here he counterattacks, but then all of a sudden he stops attacking at all, ever. So yeah, like I said, at the beginning he takes that hit, he takes it again, and then he just takes the third one like that. So It just doesn't look that fishy to me. I mean, like I said, I don't... Like, I don't understand, really, like, is that move super good, the one that Gigas hit them with? I've heard Gigas is terrible, so probably not, but at the same time, I just, I don't know enough, so I don't feel qualified. But as far as then when, uh, while I was, like, dancing around, um, that looks like Tekken to me. That looks like basically how Tekken looks. <laughs> so, like, I, I don't know, man. I, I don't feel like it's that bad. Right. Uh, I mean, it's interesting because I saw like some top players like in the Kotaku article that was linked that, that that's where I got the clip from. Uh, Spiro Jin actually is in the chat down there and he actually says it looks really suspicious. Like laws wouldn't dash forward and not hit a button and stuff like that. You know, OK, so I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I just don't know enough, man. But uh, there you go. So um uh, I guess a lot of people are just arguing that they shouldn't be banned. It was just more like mob mentality because apparently when they were accused of collusion, the response that King J and Krizzle gave like weren't satisfactory, you know, to the public. And so it I became see. kind of like a public witch hunt kind of thing like that. So I don't know. Well, I, I do think that although, like I said, I, I don't think there's an argument to be made really that the players didn't know that they shouldn't come collude right. know, just because uh -huh. there wasn't a rule about that because everybody pretty much knows that but i do feel that the bar for banning somebody due to collusion should be pretty high okay. i feel okay. like it should be right. you should be like pretty sure pretty super sure that they did collude and if not then that's just kind of i don't know it's a lot of money on the line nowadays you know in order to <laughs> In order to ban somebody, I do feel like there should be some procedure, right. you know, some, uh, uh -huh. some, uh, even if it's not something explicit, at least, like, be very sure about it, and right. if they're not very sure about it, then I am not down with the ban. It's kind like of... I said, I just don't know enough about tech and gameplay to be sure either way myself. Right, so it's kind of like, you know, like when Riot banned those teams... There wasn't really an appeals process and stuff like yeah. that, right? So, um, yeah, yeah. It's it, when there's, as there is now, money on the line and more on the line. I do think that there should be bigger, uh, you know, more sort of well, interesting explicit procedures. So interesting enough. Uh, shout out to Rip. He actually jumped in the chat and he says, "Yeah, there's a lot of safe options he could have used. Looks fishy, but maybe that guy just sucks." The ban collusion. The ban for collusion is super rough, though. We'll see. So, uh, yeah. according to him, I guess he, he said it did look a little iffy. So, yeah. But you know what? I mean, the the thing all I can say is like I feel like they should have just took away their wins for the win. You know, the the, the qualifications for those two events. And yeah. just let them into all the other events, you know? I don't feel like they should ban them for, like, the whole season or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, that. that does seem pretty severe. Right. So, okay. All right. Um, uh, well, interest, Shoegazer in the chat actually says that he wants to email you about some stuff. I mean, 
He knows our email address, so you can... I see that. Yeah. David at TPGLaw. There you go. Hey, uh, you want to uh, take a break, and when we come back, we can talk about... Uh, I'd like to talk about the injustice stuff, because there's a bunch of injustice news. Okay, yeah, let's try to get the Skype working in between the chats so I don't have sure. to do this, because actually, to be honest with you, like... If I was actually making sweeping motions with the mouse, this would be a lot easier. But the fact that it's all subtle motions is actually a lot more tiring. <laughs> well, I guess there goes your pro StarCraft career, huh? Yeah, I guess so, right? So I'm going to have Carpal Tunnel and it's all done. So there you go. Okay. All right. All right, we're going to take a break. I'll see if I can get Skype working and we'll be right back, guys. Hey, welcome back, everybody. We're going to fix this. I don't need to have animated David anymore. Ah, there you are. Look at you. You're back. All right. All right. Back and um, back and with an attitude. I don't know. Anyways, continue. Uh, let's move on here. So you wanted to talk about a lot of uh, injustice news. Yeah. I mean, there was a nice stream last week that went over dark side and green lantern and green arrow and the whole multiverse thing that they're doing right in injustice right. too um dark side actually was pretty, i mean lantern and arrow they had some differences uh for sure but like largely the same characters um dark side is really interesting i he looked to me like he was just basically like zod i mean he's clearly zod like his, <laughs> his like you know back of the of the uh, his arms in the back right. stance is is not it's okay. like just ripped okay. off, um, but uh, his beam is cool. It just looks cool. I think it's just like a high beam, but uh, it looks cool. He has a lot of mobility, uh, you know, teleport uh, and and uh, from the teleport in the air, he can cancel directly into a low attack that comes from the air, Ooh. or he can do an overhead attack from the air. And then probably like more interestingly, he has uh, these dudes that pop up into the background mm, that like mm, mm. help control space and explode right. uh, and you call them into certain spots and um, just like interesting you know Injustice it just has like weird ideas like that so uh, I, I think it's I think he looks more interesting than I was worried he would I thought he would just be like a sort of basic screen control type character but okay. there's a lot more okay. mobility and uh, kind of funky ideas in there you know, if the explodey guy is out, um, which is actually what they called him, explodey guy. Explodey guy. <laughs> uh, okay. If, if he's out and you grab them and he's there, then you'll get a full combo off the grab. So, okay. you know, it's just like a lot of cool things like that. Okay, cool, uh, cool. So, I, I, yeah, I really liked him um, more than I expected that I would. Uh, so that's that's cool. There's, there's character stuff. Right. What about but, Green Lantern and uh, Green Arrow? Did you get to see them much in the, walk, in the, in the Watchtower stuff? Uh, yeah, Arrow looked like he has a lot of the same stuff. There's like a little bit, there's some different moves. I feel like, if I recall correctly, um, his, uh, he has like meter burn, flippy flip bow move. I forget what it's called. <laughs> Whatever. Well, it's going to be flippy flip bow new move from now on, I think. So. Sure. Uh, that, I, that leads to more consistent damage than before. Okay. Um, and his super is not a, it's not an unblockable anymore, but... He just has bigger combos in general. He can also move back and forth while holding the arrow now, which oh, is pretty okay, sweet, actually. Okay, okay. Hurricane Bow. There you okay. go. Hurricane yeah, bow. He, 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 looked, he looked cool. Um, <laughs> but I would say that the, the biggest Injustice move, uh, news is that there's this huge Injustice yeah, 2 championship. Yeah, uh, I series. want to talk about that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, the, the game is coming out in just a, like a week and a half at this point. So when it comes to the characters... We'll all find out all you know everything about them pretty shortly at this point, and have to refind out everything about them mm -hmm. only a week later when the game is patched for the first time. Right. Uh, and then two weeks later when it's patched for the second time. Yeah, it seems like there's a lot of uh, different parts to the Injustice Championship series. Uh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the the, the big so six hundred thousand dollars in total, but um, there's like the Pro series. Which is mm -hmm. you know, the CPT more or less, and, right. and as uh -huh. you know, many good games are, are doing it at this point. Uh, Combo Breaker is going to be the first one, but there's a bunch of others. PCT and... was announced as one of them as well. Yeah. 
What's that? Can you hear me? So, yeah, I just, I just. Oh, okay, okay, up. okay. Uh, but yeah, it looks like they also have this GameStop hometown heroes. There's uh, Injustice Two Path to Pro. A lot of like little different uh, subsections. I haven't read up on the details of it yet. So, but it says it's run in partnership between ESL, PlayStation Four, GameStop, and Gameltas Esports. Uh, yeah, and it says this will a chance for both pro and amateur players in North America, Latin America, and Europe. Interestingly that they don't mention anything about Asia, though. Yeah, I know. They just don't have that big of an audience there, and I think that they know that. Um, but hopefully that will change. Uh, I think their their biggest audiences are in, in those areas. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I, I can think of more Australian players than I can <laughs> you know, Asian players, right. so... I don't know. Anyway, hopefully that'll change. But we always he, talked he, about maybe potentially infiltration picking up because he liked MK, but he just yeah. didn't like the gore, right? So, right, right, uh, exactly. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. So the, the pro series is the is the global one. That's mm -hmm. there's three hundred thousand dollars in total for that. Yes. Right. And then there's the sort of hometown heroes is what it's called, but it's it's I think it's more like the amateur. Mm. Kind of thing. Okay. Not as much money involved in that. Okay. Okay. Only five thousand okay. bucks. Uh, Europe has similar stuff. Twenty thousand bucks for them. Five thousand for the injustice for the uh, the Liga Latina. Mm -hmm. um, for the uh, for for Latin America. Right. So there. Well, what I like about it is that it's it's more expansive than some of what other devs are doing because it's not just about the pro players. Mm -hmm. You know, they're trying to foster players in, in different regions at a more sort of localized level as right. well, not the, okay. not the, not the giant stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, there's different regions. It's kind, it's kind of like the, you know, how Red Bull does the uh, proving ground stuff, right? The proving grounds. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. But it's more explicitly like associated with, with the championship series in, okay. in general. Okay. So there's like Atlanta and Chicago and Dallas and LA, and Miami, New York, San Francisco, Seattle, you know, all, all all over the place. Okay. Okay. So I, I, I really like that. I think that's really good yeah. to see that it's it's not just that there's uh, for example in Street Fighter, Red Bull's doing this but for I mean it, it kind of ties into the CPT, right? But it's not explicitly part of it. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so that's what that's what's happening. Cool. Um, uh, they also I, I mean I was nice. I saw a trailer where they showed off a bunch of the one player stuff too. Like the story mode sounds like you can choose to start the story in one of the different factions and like you will make decisions that will affect the story and all sorts of things like that. And then there was, you remember how MKX had like the, the, the clans that you could join. There was like yeah. the, the, so it looks like they're doing similar things so you can team up with other players again. And you know, uh, they're gonna have like different challenges so that you can get new gear and it's gonna change like on a daily basis and stuff like that. So. I mean, it sounds like NRS is doing their very, you know, like standard, awesome one player content kind of thing, yeah. you know. Um, but I mean, yeah. a question though, in the end, like, I don't know if you've heard, like, how much did people enjoy the stuff like being able to choose their clans and stuff like that in Mortal Kombat? Did, did you know, that... that that didn't end up playing a, a huge role. Basically, what happened was people picked whatever teams they wanted to at the start. But then there was some incentive for having one with like every team. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, whoever gets the most points, I forget how the points are even done at this point, okay. but the, the whoever gets the most points globally is the team that wins. Right. So oh. one team started out winning and then everybody was like, okay, my one team won. I'm going to go to the next one because I want to get that. Oh, you know, whatever okay, the reward okay. is for that. Right. And what ended up happening is that they all ended up on, I think, Special Forces, if I recall correctly. <laughs> because that was the that was the one that nobody wanted. Whichever one was the one that nobody wanted. Uh -huh. They all ended up there last because that was the last one they were all like, oh, all right, I guess I'll finally get the thing for oh, you know, right. winning with this okay, team. Okay. And now, okay. and I feel like for an entire year or something at this point, whenever I log into MKX, it says... Special Forces wins this week's <laughs> yada yada because every, because once everybody got the trophy for for that one and they had gotten all the team's trophies they just stayed right yeah exactly there was no reason so to it's change been, it's yeah. been the same one forever so it, it okay. wasn't it was a cool idea but I don't know that it really 
was like a huge thing okay. the faction battles okay. But definitely a cool idea. It's funny to me, though, that Special Forces was, like, the least popular one. <laughs> I think it was Special Forces, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. No one wants to join uh, Johnny Cage, I guess, so. Uh. Yeah. Um, uh, I didn't honestly watch the multiverse thing at all. I watched the Watchtower stream that included Darkseid and Arrow and stuff. Oh, okay, 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 okay. And I literally fast-forwarded through... The multiverse <laughs> section, which was like the first 40 minutes of the stream like they put a lot of time into it oh man and uh you're just, just like whatever i don't care about this okay okay that's pretty much what i thought eh, okay. whatever i don't really care that much yeah uh, that's yeah. funny that's uh, funny but no it, i might not care that much but i know that it is really a big deal mm -hmm. in terms of getting people to buy the game and nrs always does that they always have great one person content yeah. MKX was the same, and Justice, MK9 was the same. There's a ton of stuff to unlock. There are real story modes. You know, there's there are funky versus modes that you can play against each other right. if you're just playing casually. There's mm -hmm. There are, uh, even still actually in MK, uh, different towers that change. Yeah, constantly. that's right, like, yeah. Uh -huh. that, that they're still updating all that stuff, so... It, <sighs> so cool, yeah. I mean, it, it really is. Good job they, to those guys, honestly. Sure. Like, good job to it's them. It's great. Yeah. It's okay. great. So okay. that's all going to continue. And I'm sure that that will be a big part of of people buying the game. My, my hope, as it was for MKX, is that that will then translate into some percentage of people, you know, right. getting it up. Right, getting into the tournament scene and stuff like that. Exactly. Okay. And, and I feel like there is a bigger chance of that happening in Injustice 2 for, I mean... Uh, Couple reasons. You know, one of them is that there are people who don't like the gameplay aspects of MK that were that are very unique to it. The block button. Oh, uh, you're okay, okay. You know, the, the fatalities. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Things like that are not in Injustice. It's a back-to-block game. You know, it doesn't have fatalities. So it's, uh, I think, like a bit more conducive to people who play other games competitively, or at least like reasonably, to picking it up and, and playing. But then on on top of that, uh, the fact that Injustice, you know, they're, they've already announced this championship series makes me makes me think that they're going to be putting more effort into trying to get people, like, aware of the fact that there are tournament series. Mm -hmm. They, If you recall, you know, they they did do pre-release MKX stuff. Right. They, they uh, did uh, the Fatal uh, 8 tournament beforehand. Right. Shortly after that, they did you know, their own pro league, but it wasn't announced beforehand or in as big of a way as as this is. Yeah, this seems like they're going all in on it. Like it's one of the major feature things about it. And exactly. I get I bet you anything when you buy the game, it's gonna be all over the title screen and all these others. There's probably gonna be information panels where all they do is just talk about that stuff and I really know, hope so. Hopefully they update it a lot more often because i know like for killer instinct it was like i think it was outdated for a little bit i know guilty gear like even long after frosty faustings and anime ascension were done their title screen still says frosty faustings and anime ascension nice. as upcoming tournaments you know stuff like that so if they're I, I would count on nrs updating that stuff a lot more often and on a more consistent basis yeah yeah um, okay. and then you know I was, I was talking with you about this over the weekend, but there are some people at least who, who have hope that the game will not be patched as frequently as MK and Injustice yeah, 1 and course. so forth. Yeah. You know, because MKXL, once that game came out, was was there's more hands offness. Mm -hmm. Certainly the online play will be good from the start. Already we've had the beta and it was good. You know, mm -hmm. I, I played with people from from uh, I think far was Montreal and it was fine. Okay. You know, I felt I felt good. And, you know, betas are always not as good as the final releases just because there are fewer people playing. But I still feel that given how MKX's online ended up that there's no reason to expect anything bad out of Injustice mm -hmm. 2s. It's it's going to be good, I'm sure. Right. So that, that helps convince people to play. Uh, Dude, I mean, you know, honest... Nobody wants to play a, a, a laggy game. And <laughs> if you can play online and have a good experience, then you're more likely to search out competitive play yeah you know, I'm more, I, I, more likely to get I, I, into that side of it yeah. honestly if the online is good like i would definitely play it a lot more you know because i mean 
I mean, the, the, the MK1, I never got into once they fixed the net code, but I just know the original yeah. one was not particularly strong, you know. No, it was bad. It, right. was, it, was, it was bad. I mean, there's no other way to put it. Mm -hmm. But they built, they rebuilt the game really from ground up. They had mm -hmm. to, I remember talking with some of the people who work at NRS before the game's net code was adjusted. And they said that they couldn't do it because it would require them literally rebuilding the game from ground up just based on how Dang. inputs were and all, all this other stuff. But they did it. And That's really impressive, actually. It, it was. They spent a year doing it. You know, they put a lot of money into that. So, you know, I'm sure that they're going to continue uh, working on that stuff because you don't put that kind of effort into something and just right. toss it away. They probably knew that the, it was worth the time and effort because it would be something that could just go straight into Injustice 2, right? Exactly. So, NMK11, assuming right, that happens. Yeah, and exactly, all exactly. So definitely a worthy... Uh, investment for them to fix a lot of that stuff so okay um okay anything else that you want to say about injustice comes out soon comes I out know, soon i really hope right? that more people give it a chance injustice one got got you know a pretty good set of people giving it a chance uh and the nrs scene itself is bigger than it was back when even when mkx came out mm -hmm. so yeah i'm i'm really excited for for the game's release i'm really excited for the game coming out and, and being able to play it um, oh, uh, uh, Ketchup and Mustard were announced as coming to Combo Breaker. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. That yeah. is so cool. Okay, uh, okay. You and I are not going to be there. No. We are going to be at the Red Bull Kumite, but uh, we... Yeah. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's awesome. I'm really, I'm really happy for them coming out. And, you know, there are good commentators in north america too for that game so uh, i wonder so. is that is but, that something that warner brothers is helping fund get them out there because it is part of the championship series and all this stuff like that you know maybe yeah, I, I assume that they have a hand in it but i i haven't asked them or anything okay 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 uh all right well uh there's not i don't have too much in terms of game community, et cetera, all that stuff. But the main one that I really wanted to talk about, well, also, um, I didn't get a chance to mention this last week. Oh, I did. I did mention this last week. Uh, but, you know, the Guilty Gear Rev demo was out, right? Um, if you have PlayStation Plus, you can get it for free, right? You just go and go to... It's easier to find on the Sony webpage or go to the PlayStation Store webpage, but... You can download Rev 2 right now if you have PlayStation Plus. It's free. It has every character in it as a yeah. fully, fully fleshed out training mode and a fully fleshed out offline uh, versus mode. So it's it's fantastic. Only thing you can't do is play online, but that makes sense, right? So, uh, but definitely should pick that up. Um, one of the things that I really wanted to talk about that is really cool news because a, a while ago. Someone tweeted out basically like, what is the reason you don't play KOF 14? And mm. I, I retweeted this because I wanted to help the, the scene, right? I wanted to see what the response was. And I would say a majority of the responses were, I can't play this game on PC because it's not out right. on Steam. Well, guess what? <laughs> they just announced uh, in China in a press conference that it is coming out on Steam now. Uh, they don't have an official release date. They hinted it was this month, but um, it's coming out on Steam now. So all the people who play fighting games on PCs only, they have the ability to go and get this game now. And um, I saw, I, I tweeted this out, and a lot of people were excited about it. So, I mean, let's hope that this really helps the scene a lot. So Yeah, and, and look, even if you're not intending to play the game, I really hope everybody buys it on Steam just to support it, you know, just <laughs> to to convince, you know, if, for example, you're not somebody who plays a lot on PC fighting mm -hmm, games, mm -hmm. it's just really nice to be able to, you know, support something like that for everybody else who does want to play right, PC exactly, games. Right, exactly, exactly. Uh, so, yeah, pick it up. Mm -hmm, definitely. Give, give it a shot. Give it a shot for sure. So Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, you hate to be somebody who likes fighting games a lot but doesn't buy games on PC just to support them, you know? Right. Uh, I guess there is a closed uh, beta that's also showing up for that as well. But uh, also coming this weekend, as we mentioned earlier, the, the, the CFN beta test part two 
is coming out, and it's going to be possible to play on PS4 and on Steam, I believe it is. I think it's for both, but yeah, they yes. originally released it on, on Steam, and they were like, um, yeah, this will, we're just doing this beta. Apparently the beta didn't go as well as they wanted, because they right. said, you know what, we're going to do a second beta. And now that they're doing a second beta, and they said a lot of the new things, and Ed, you know, and everything like that was kind of attached to it, that's why Ed hasn't come out yet, that's why he's been a little bit delayed, because they want to release all that stuff all at the same time. Right. So uh, they're going to the second beta, and again... Look, everyone was mad. They were like, Street Fighter V is not a complete game. We would have waited, etc., etc. So I don't want to hear anybody being mad about the CFN update, about this patch update, about Ed coming out a little bit later, because if they take the time to fix the netcode for as much as possible and make it as good as possible, I'm willing to, to chill. You know what I mean? I'm definitely willing to wait. So I, I'm with you on that. Uh, I definitely prefer the philosophy of what is it uh uh a game that's delayed ends up good but a game that comes out too early is always bad <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah but yeah, yeah. but that said i also understand why people would be upset that the game is taking longer to happen than they had expected because that's just been the theme of things but you know personally i i'm happy that they are taking more time to make sure everything works because okay. that to me is what's most important um, uh, anything else that you want to say about that? Um, or about KOF, I should say? Oh, about KOF. Oh, I'm uh, sorry, about CFN. Yeah, sorry. My, my brain C is, my brain is like... Wow, I'll get both of them. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> and I'll get both of them for PC. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, also, uh, what else do I have here? I had, uh... So as I mentioned earlier, Kizzy K was signed by Fable, so that's actually really cool. Yeah, that's and then, really great. Um, Perfect Legend has joined Evolved as a player manager. So he got, uh, I guess, I don't know if he's going to be a sponsored player for them. Huh. Uh, but uh, yeah, he's actually getting signed as a player manager. Uh, I guess uh, he is still sponsored by Stream.me, but he is okay. part of Evolved now as their player manager. Interesting. Yeah. Huh. Did not realize. Yeah. So uh, interesting. Find out. I guess we'll find out more details about that as time goes on. For sure, man. Very cool. Uh, also, just uh, from a community standpoint, just wanted to mention that Born Free uh, tweets. Um, the guy, you know, the, 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 the interviewer from England who keeps making these great interviews, he's still cranking out interviews. He was just at, uh, at, a, at DreamHack, so he did yeah. even more interviews. So he did a bunch at NCR, he did a bunch more at DreamHack. So you should definitely check that out. I, I believe his YouTube channel is just Born Free Tweets. So if you look that up on YouTube, you should be able to find all those interviews there. And then also just wanted to point out... Um, have you seen the new uh, pop culture shock statues for Chun Li that are coming out? No. Those things are ridiculous. Holy crap! Okay. Like it looks so nice. Like, okay. Uh, that's I, cool. I, I want to like bust it out here, but like because the Chrome is so slow, and I'm afraid if I window mm. capture, it's going to be super slow. But they're super expensive, so I mean, like you will be paying a lot of money. Uh, if you want to get these things, but it is really, really nice. It is really, okay. really nice looking. Yeah, cool. but what was the price again? Because uh, they, they have all they have three variants too. Um, they have the alpha version, they have the original one, and then they have the the battle dress from Street Fighter Five. But yeah, according to this, the the statues are like nine hundred dollars and nine hundred and twenty five dollars. So oh my god, I lost David. David, where did you go? I lost David. David, where are you? David, where did you go? Um, David is not interested in the uh, show. I uh, in the statues, I guess. So, um, David, David, no! He's gone. Okay. Um. Well, I guess that's it. 
then for the this episode, um, that was the last thing that I had to talk about. So I don't have anything else to talk about. So I guess um, that'll do it for today. Uh, it's Pop Culture Shock. That's the name of the company that makes the statues. Uh, that's that's uh, so if you are, if you have the money, if you have the money to to, to, to to go for it. But I mean, honestly, if you take a look at them though, the quality is really really nice. Oops, leave it is back. Oh, hey. oh, there you are. Okay, okay, you're back. Something broke. Yeah. Oh well. Well, I mean, I had nothing left to say to be honest with you. Oh. So. Um, I had no other news. And let, some people did say that we only talked about the story mode for MVCI, but we didn't get to talk any about the gameplay stuff. But Really? Uh, I thought we did talk about that, because we were talking about like what we thought of the, the gems and all these things like that. I swear yeah. we did talk about it. So I thought we did, too. Yeah. But, uh, okay. It looked cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited for it. I think there's a oh, lot yeah. of potential in it. I think there's a lot of potential in there, so... Oh yeah, yeah. Me, me too. Just know, knowing more about it, it just sounds like there's so much freedom in in its game. Yeah. Play. Like you get to go back and forth. They describe it as whenever you want between characters, you know, switching here and there mm-hmm. and all that stuff. And if it really is that free, then man, it is going to be <laughs> just a wild game. Dude, it's, I'm just trying to figure out how they're going to prevent infinite because, like, if you just do dash. Punch, punch, kick, like, punch, kick, punch, kick, and then switch, punch, kick, punch, kick, switch, punch, kick. There's got to be some sort of, like, ground hit stun deterioration. Because ground hit stun deterioration wasn't really a thing because everything would eventually pop the guy up. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I wonder. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. That may, maybe it's that, you know, if you have something that, like, Chun-Li legs, maybe that will give enough time for the opponent to, for the, your partner to come out and right. actually continue uh-huh. the combo. But if you just do, like, jab switch you don't have enough time to jab afterward i don't know i don't know i feel oh, i'm sure that they have thought of, the, of these things that's but. right and also uh there was delay on grounded opponents to prevent the jump infinites and stuff like that on people okay but um yeah okay. I, I i don't think i'm too concerned about that but yeah there's the idea of the i feel like we talked about this yeah uh, 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 i'm pretty sure we did the the burst effectively the burst for two meters of you bring in your partner when you're being comboed, right. and the opponent can continue the combo, but if they don't expect that, then yeah. they have to. Then they would drop it. If they do expect it, they have to tailor the combo differently. I think that's really cool. I like it's that. It's super cool, man. There, there, there are such interesting ideas in there, and you know, look, I, I love Skullgirls. One of the main reason was there was a lot of freedom in that game. You mm. could make any assist, okay, any any okay. move your assist, right? Yeah, you could be a normal, yeah, yeah. Assist, uh-huh, anything uh-huh, you wanted uh-huh. to do. That was was unique and, and fascinating, right? And right. Uh, and Marvel three didn't have that. Marvel two didn't have that. There was right. nothing like that. But if this is really like this, mm-hmm. there's that much freedom. Then it sort of is like Skullgirls, with the exception that anything can be your assist whenever. Right. 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 So like you could you could have I don't know if he's in the game or whatever. You could have Doom, Doom Beam. A, you know, call your partner mm-hmm. and then the Hulk moves forward. Or maybe not Doom Beam because. What if there's like Shuma, right? And the Shuma beam, which right. takes a while to come out. Mm-hmm. You do Shuma beam, then Hulk, then Hulk moves forward, and then the Shuma beam, which has, <laughs> you know, then it comes out. Right. I, I just, I feel like there are there are tons of possibilities in there. Okay. So I'm, I'm very interested. Very okay. interested. All right. Uh, also, uh, we forgot to talk about the events coming up this weekend, which we should definitely talk about. Because uh, Battle Arena Melbourne 9 is this weekend, and that is a premier event. So uh, that one is going to be a big one. That one is going to be streamed on twitch.tv slash Capcom Fighters. I don't know if there's actual, like, um, I don't know if there's uh, brackets out there for that yet. Mm-hmm. But uh, Battle Arena Melbourne 9 is going to be taking place this weekend, and it is going to be on twitch.tv Capcom Fighters. So this is a premier event. Uh, it's going to be one of the big ones. There's going to be a lot of people traveling there. But it's not even just for Street Fighter Five, right? Tekken 7, Smash 4, Melee, Brawl, Smash 64, Rivals of Ether, Exert, MKXL, huh. DOA 5, Last uh, LR, KOF 14, UMVC 3, uh, Virtual Fighter 5 is going to be there. Blaze Blue is going to be there. Central Fiction is going to be there. Wow. They're all going to be there. And you can check the schedule out at uh, couchwarriors.org. 
and you should be able to find that if you just look for the BAM schedule out there. So yeah, you know what? Uh, just linked in the chat by Wasminator. It's it's on Smash.gg, so you can oh, okay, in fact okay. check out the brackets. See then. the bra I'm just gonna make sure that that's true before I say it. Sure. Yep, it is. You okay. can see, for example, Sien is in pool one. Yada yada. So yeah. Oh yeah, all. Wasminator. I was actually saying that like. Uh, he has the same pool as like Sako and Infiltration or something like that. <laughs> oh, maybe that was changed because it. Oh, you mean he does? Yeah, he no. does. Yeah. Oh, uh, Wasminator yeah, has that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, exactly. Uh -huh. So uh, also oh, this. Yeah, just oh. listen to listen to these players I'm seeing. Just okay, sure. Start. Go for it. Go for it. So Sien Pool One, Pool Two has Verloren and Daikoku, the the sick. Uh, birdie from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, -huh, uh, -huh. uh Three has has Bonchan is in there. Uh. Let's see, uh, Marty Ken, who I've heard of. Okay. Maybe only on R Kappa, which I secretly read all the time. <laughs> yeah, that is not true. <laughs> uh, Momochi is in pool four. Uh, Goichi, pool DD1, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, Somniac is there. That's that's okay. good. I'm glad to see that uh, Australian players are still playing in Australia. Okay. Anyway, James, that's about it. There's a whole bunch of players in this list, and I yeah, probably shouldn't spend time going through all of them. So. Okay. Well, also this weekend is uh, <laughs> the Royal Flush Tournament in Tropicana, Atlantic City. Um, this one is going to have Melee and Smash 4 over there. So that's going to be a, a Smash tournament coming up. It's going to be streamed on VG Bootcamp as well as Smash Studios. Uh, there's a 5K pot bonus for Smash 4 and for Melee. So uh, lots of money to be won there at this event. Nice. And then finally, uh, I guess uh, this weekend is also going to be the Danger Room. So, you know, Angelic's been like setting that up for a little bit. He's been like right. trying to get all the voting and all that stuff and everything like that. And apparently that's going to be streamed this weekend. Oh, um, okay. Uh, that's going to be on twitch.tv slash azangelic. Nice. So, uh, that's that should be a lot of fun. That should be. A oh lot yeah, of fun. I'm looking yeah. forward to that. Sure. Uh -huh. So there you go. So uh, those are the events coming up this weekend. Also, on Friday is going to be the Group D for E League. Right. Um, there's also two online Pro Tour events. There's one in North America, and there's also one in Latin America. So there's also going. Those are also going to be streamed on. Uh, I, Twitch.tv slash Capcom Fighters. I don't know how that's going to work. They're going to have three events streaming on Twitch.tv slash uh, Twitch.tv slash Capcom Fighters. I'm not sure how that's going to work. Hey. But uh, there you go. So that's all going on this weekend as well. For Group D, just in case people don't recall, for you, League, Phenom and Knuckle Dew are already qualified into the TV round, but then in order to get in there, it's between Luffy and Reinhardt. That's first round, Ugh. actually. Kind of this, is the, this is the Europe pool, that's right. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh. yeah, yeah. Three Euro Europeans in there, kind of sucks. But yeah, that's how they did it. And then the other side of, of that sort of initial tournament is Chris Tatarian versus Xiao Hai. Oh, okay, okay. Nice, So nice. Luffy, Reinhardt, Chris Tatarian, Xiao Hai, Phenom, Knuckle Dew. It's a good list. It's a good list. Very interesting. Okay, okay. All right, good stuff. Um... Anything else that you wanted to talk about? Um, no. I think that okay. is about it. Okay, okay. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to talk about, but uh, I guess not. Okay, I guess that's all I have for today, then. I'm going to call the local mom and pop tomorrow and see if they are going to get in a certain video game, a uh -huh, certain fighting uh -huh. video game. If it wasn't if they don't have it, it would be a severe uh injustice, right? It would it would absolutely be. That is correct. Yeah, yeah it's a game. It's okay. a game that's made by uh, a certain developer you might you might call uh N Studios. Well, oh, maybe okay. that, that's too obvious. A more Nether Realm S. Oh, okay, that's much more subtle actually. That's much more yeah. subtle. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Got it, got it. We'll see. We'll see. But it, it, it should be soon because they always tend to get the game. Oh. They always do get the game, bro. <laughs> no pending about it. Right, right. Exactly. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, dude, let me know if you do get it because uh, oh, yeah. uh, I'm wonder if I would want to get it there or through Amazon anyway because I get everything through Amazon. I'd get it on Amazon anyway because I get points that way. So, 
in any case, uh, okay. But early? Come on, man. Well, if I, if I get it early, I'll let you know. You yeah, exactly. Later. I'll come over because I want to see if I can find a character or maybe we could even play it uh, like on a stream or something like that so people can actually see it. Yeah, that sounds great. Well, okay. actually, I guess we probably shouldn't play it on stream before... <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll just we'll just play it ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ourselves, so. Okay. All righty. All righty. Uh, I guess that's about it. Thanks a lot for joining us, everybody. And I'm glad that I could make it to James's place tonight, even though I had work that kept me late, and I totally went there in person. Yeah. Oh, oh sorry. I'm ruining the illusion right now. Okay. Okay. Let me fix the illusion. Here. Illusion. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm fix. I'm uh, ruining the reality. The reality of it so okay yeah what are you doing here all right. okay all right all right all right uh thanks everyone for tuning in I, I get cut off that way it doesn't really work so i would have to do this keep just uh, there you go there you go okay i'm not gonna do this anyways um all right guys i will talk to you guys later we'll see you all uh hopefully soon Oh, I Later. should also mention that this weekend, if you're in the New York area and you want to visit, there will be a Compete.Kotaku event. So that's their esports branch, the esports branch of Kotaku. And there is going to be an event over there where you can play against uh, some of the pro players. Uh, I believe it's going to be Knuckledo, Justin Wong, and Smug. So if you register for that event, you'll be able to play against them. I mention this because I will be there, and I will be doing commentary, I guess, alongside uh, Alex Vai, uh, who's going to be flown out there as well. So if you're in the New York area, feel free to check it out. And, uh, will that be streamed on the Internet? I think so. Yeah, yeah, I think it is going to be. So there you go. So, cool. Well, I'm sure we'll all be uh, looking forward to that. But there's a lot of stuff this weekend. Yeah, right? I know. There is a lot of stuff this weekend. So, okay. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, all right. Thanks uh, for skyping in, and I will talk to you later, David. And yeah, uh, it was a pleasure to be here in person. Yes, exactly. Uh, so, so, right. Thanks for coming here, uh, getting through traffic and everything like that. So, okay. <laughs> Peace out, everybody. <laughs>